in terms of additional components that are part of the functional program or process, Steve, um, can you review the importance of the environment of care considerations? Yeah, absolutely. The environment of care purposefully ties together the language that is utilized by the Joint Commission and for residential care facilities includes several considerations for discussion prior to the design of the building that's to be built. Uh, it looks at things like the delivery of care model concepts, the identification of all the users involved, the system design approach, identifying the interconnectivity between the various operational systems. It looks at the layout and the operational planning, understanding the movements that are required between the spaces, how are the staff going to function, how are the residents going to move and, and maintain their independence and mobility in those kind of spaces. It looks at things like identifying items that are supportive of person-centered care and committing to including those items in the actual building that's built. So yeah, I mean, a little bit of planning on the front end really uh, helps you to create an environment where people are, are just able to live fully. Uh, we had a situation uh, a few years back where there was a gentleman who moved here uh, from the West Coast. He had lived in an assisted living community. He was nearing the end of life and wanted to get back closer to his family and, and the area where he grew up. And so he uh, moved and, and ended up in our, our skilled nursing households. Um, he was a painter uh, by trade and actually a, a pretty renowned painter. He had painted the portrait of uh, Supreme Court Justice Sandra Day O'Connor that hung in the Supreme Court. So he was really skilled and gifted. Um, what we found out when he moved in is years had gone by, he hadn't painted at all. And when the staff talked to him about that, the reason for that was that he, uh, he just wasn't going to paint in the environment that was created for painting in that assisted living community. They would have, they told him that the only way to paint is to go to the activity room when we're painting <laughs> and they pulled out the, you know, the elementary school watercolor sets and, and that was not what he was going to, he'd rather not paint than paint that way. And so he just hadn't for years. Um, when he moved here, the staff found out about them. Again, it, because it's a person-centered environment and the staff are tuned into that, they actually talked with him about what his story was, who he was, what his passions were, how he wanted to live fully. And uh, so they found out about that. They contacted the family and said, you got to bring his easels and his canvases and his paints over. They set it up right in his resident bedroom. And for the rest of his life, for the remainder of his life, he painted. And he had paint splattered on the walls and he had paint splattered on the carpets. And uh, in fact, at one point, the Department of Health came in for their survey and thought that it might be a dignity <laughs> issue. Um, but when we talked with them and helped them to understand, they realized that no, the, the dignity was really came from allowing him to live fully, allowing him to paint, allowing him to live his passion at that last season of his life. And so he created a number of beautiful works of art, but more importantly, he got to live in a way that brought meaning to him in those final days of his life. Jane, what are the physical environment considerations for the environment of care? Uh, Steve, I, it's really important to talk about the environment of care from that perspective, because what Steve was outlining is about the management philosophy and those other items that are often not discussed ahead of time. So I don't understand how you can design a space without understanding the care model. You know, how, how can you possibly do that? So in addition to that, there's environmental considerations as well that need to be evaluated. So some of the physical environment elements include light and views. So for example, natural light, daylight, uh, there's research that shows that resetting the circadian rhythm is really important for residents. So 20 minutes outside of being able to get sunlight and daylight, um, there's actually a new development in Denmark that I saw last year that was a glazing application that allows the right wave of the sun to come through to actually allow vitamin D to be generated in the body. So I was like, wow, that's the kind of innovation that you're trying to find, you know, within the physical environment because it actually can really help with this with this item. Um, signage and wayfinding, you have excellent examples here at Garden Spot Village of wayfinding in terms of your tree that was designed as a sculpture um, in your front lobby area. But it's also that landmark, understanding where you are user control of the environment. So when do I have the choice in being able to have user control? One of my favorite pictures actually is from here. Um, I call it the 
uh, affectionately call it the mugshot, um, where the three ladies can come in the morning and they can come whenever they want to and they get caught up on their gossip in the morning. They come up, have a cup of coffee. Uh, one resident actually uses a styrofoam cup for her coffee because it keeps it hotter. What an incredible opportunity to have control of your environment and, and choice and the dignity of being able to do and, and when you want to wake up and where you want to be and how you want to run your day because you still have that quality uh, of being able to do that. Um, looking at uh, privacy and confidentiality, not just from a HIPAA perspective, but also from a dignity perspective and, and keeping that in mind when you're evaluating that. Uh, safety and security. We look at safety and security, but it's not a lockdown. And I think that we still think sometimes when communities that I go into, it feels like you're incarcerated. And, and it's not something that allows for freedom of movement. And you can still be safe and actually have a, a lot of security measures play, put in place. Um, another, another component that we've included in this section is the architecture details, surfaces, and furnishings. There is so much in the detail. When they say doubles in the details, it really is. And I think that anything from a seat height, uh, I've watched residents have to pull other residents out of a chair or a seating condition that can, puts them at fall risk. It puts the other person at risk. They can hurt themselves in many different ways simply because the chair was too deep and the seat wasn't high enough and that they didn't have arms. You know, it's just like very simple pieces. So all of that information we found to, to want you to critically look at that. It all has implications into the final design. Another favorite I have is cultural responsiveness. And where I've seen this the most is I was in a nursing home in Minnesota and I walked in and I didn't know that they actually made log cabin vinyl wall covering that looked like the inside of a log cabin, right? And I'm like, from a designer perspective, that was a little bit much. Um, but we added that to the mounted heads that would follow you like the Mona Lisa around the room with the, with the uh, mounted heads uh, of different locations of different animals and firearms in an open cabinet that wasn't locked. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, nursing home, this is very strange. But then when you looked at the context of it, it was veterans, uh, from a lot from the Upers, from the upper part of the state. Uh, it made total sense in context to who they're serving in terms of the cultural responsiveness of it. Um, walking from that room to a room that had not been renovated, glaring white walls, we apologize forever for mob and teal, the little borders, the whole thing. You couldn't even see outside of the beautiful courtyard because the glare was so bad because of the daylight and the, and the gleam of the TV and the, you know, the, the noise coming from the television set. And then we walk from that space back into this, okay, oddly decorated, I guess you'd say, from a designer perspective, but completely appropriate. Um, so looking at cultural responsiveness is really important to who you're serving and also who are the staff members that are serving people. Um, and then access to nature, actually having the ability to go outside un unconstrained. So for example, if not having access to nature, I've been in communities where people have not gone outside for 10 years or more. And that opportunity of not being able to go outside, I just can't imagine that. So having the access to nature, but it has to be planned in as part of the process. Because if you put uh, your outdoor space in an area that has no site supervision or sight lines for staff, often staff don't feel comfortable that the resident is safe to be outside. So how can we do that so that it's planned upfront and that you, it's not an afterthought or the in-between space, it's actually part of the program space.